Yes, the question again was, have you ever Googled your own name or searched your own name on the internet using whatever uh, uh, search tool? Okay. What you find there is really kind of the foundation of what your digital footprint is, right? And you don't have to answer the question, but you think about this. What did you find? And are you satisfied with that? Is that okay for you, what you found? Okay, someone just did for the first time. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Jerry, what I, I always say, whether it is positive or negative, it helps you. Mm. So we shouldn't be afraid of what people say and what people think and post. Because if it's not true, it keeps you honest. That's my take. What if it's uh, something that might negatively affect you? Well, I can't control that. It's very costly to have to do so. Mm. So you have to deal with it. And well, as about... I said, <laughs> it will help you. And I think most of the time, though, this is dictated by what you have posted yourself, right? So not necessarily. Um, some of us at school, we are public figures, you know, and sometimes there would be um, documentaries or um, news items about events that we have hosted, whether we were classroom teachers, club coordinators, events mm -hmm. coordinators. And I mean, once once it is recorded and posted, it is a digital footprint. And like we tell the students ourselves, we have no control over that anymore. Once it's out, and yeah. whether we did it, wh whether we did it ourselves or somebody else did it, you know persons just you know do you you may have person saying saying everything entirely truthful and positive but you may just well as find one person disagreeing just for disagreement sake and if they speak the truth about whatever it is they say that's okay and if they've lied or misconstrued or said something negative which you know isn't factual it's on them that's my take yeah okay Mm. That's my no, take okay. because I cannot control it. It, I, it will stress me out <laughs> yeah. trying to figure out what everything is, what what everybody right. says or what anybody says about me. That's because true. I know, I know me and every one of us here. We know ourselves. That's if it is something point. that you know that that can definitely be taken up, then you have the police to to help. You have the IT unit. You have lawyers. But then in our society, it's really taxing. So you just don't bother. And that's my mindset. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. And a couple of things that just popped up, you know, kind of relates in the in the chat here, which are good points. And I'll I'll look at the comments here in a second. <clears throat> but um, one of them was uh, from uh, Evodia. I hope I'm saying that, uh, pronouncing that correctly. Before I knew how to use privacy settings, all my tweets and Facebook posts were coming up. Holy smokes, that that is directly talking about how we are managing our digital identity, how we're managing our digital footprint, knowing how to use those privacy settings, how to manage what is going to show up in a, ser in a search, right? Um, someone else, Augusta said they found nothing. So it, it it's sometimes good, it's sometimes bad. You know, maybe you shouldn't have posted some of those photos that, you know, from the, you know, night out that you, you might regret later. Sometimes you find nothing because you don't really have a social media imprint or or any of that. And that's fine. Or sometimes having nothing, you might want something and, and try to build that in a positive manner, right? So different ways to look at it. Um, yeah, no, good point. Uh, Turbury, that's great. <laughs> so, yeah, what's on the internet now is on the internet. Okay, so let's. I I know we need to move on a little bit here, but I want to um, just check in with you. Self assessment. So, do you know? You know, think about these. These are just prompts for you to think about. I know how to interact, communicate, and collaborate through digital technologies, while being aware of cultural and generational diversity. Reason this is important 
is because of, you know, if we're working with students who are not uh, in our same age bracket, right? Um, you know, generally I've worked historically with adult learners, so it's not as prevalent there, although there are generational diversity still with adults. Um, but these are some of the things that we need to be aware of. Cultural diversity. Um, think about how we might tailor ourselves and our communication and how we collaborate while being aware of those diversities, okay? Digital participation. I know how to participate in society through public and private digital services and participatory citizenship. And I know how to manage my digital presence, identity, and reputation. Bringing it together, okay, we're, how, you know, when we talk about communication and collaboration using other uh, using appropriate digital tools, and I know how to manage my online identity um, or footprint as a, a part of being a good digital citizen. These concepts all are re represented, and we'll get into this in a second here, under the elements of digital citizenship. Raise your hand if you have are familiar with the um, generally accepted nine elements of digital citizenship. Um, and if not, that's okay. Because uh, we're going to talk about that um, as sort of an overarching lens to look at all of these these elements again um, within this part of the framework. Quickly to talk about the uh, competencies here that that we're we're referencing. We're referencing interacting through digital technologies. So you'll be able to find resources below, um, and I'll try to add some more um, to this Padlet. Uh, as uh, I find them. Talking about communication in this case, tutorials about how to um, communicate in a business setting, right? Um, how to use email effectively and appropriately. How formal, okay? So sh you can look at these. Um, I'm not gonna dwell on these because of the of the time. But you can go through each of these subcategories of the competencies and find all of these resources as usual. This is the same format as the as we've been using in the past. So I'm just going to move through these, but those are there for you. Uh, okay, that's going to bring us to our activity. Okay, today what we're going to do is. Um, a digital citizenship scavenger hunt. All right, and I hope this is, I hope this will be fun for you. This is, uh, we've got a lot more participants now, so we'll be able to break out into our groups um, pretty well. So to start with, <clears throat> If you're on a computer, I would um, suggest that you open up both of these links in a tab to have them for reference, okay? Um, they're both related to digital citizenship and, um, and they are really good resources. And you can kind of springboard off of those to find the rest of the information that we want to use for our um, our activity today. Jerry, while you show the activity, do you want me to create a breakout group for each? Uh, I already did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, they're ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that it might self-sort, but I'm not sure what that, if that function, I couldn't test that in the, um, when no one was there, but they should be there if you click on breakout rooms. Okay. So the digital tools that we used today. Well, actually, let me let me just pause there. Let's look at the, the activity and then I'll kind of give you a recap after we're done. If you click on this, we're going to go into another Padlet. It's like Padletception, I call it, when we go from Padlet inside another Padlet. <laughs> um, what we're going to do today is we are going to, if you open up those resources, you'll see that there are nine elements of digital citizenship. And some of them relate to what we're talking about today. And there's more, right? So what did we talk about? What are we talking about today? 
communication and collaboration? Well, communication's right here, right? Uh, element four, edit, digital etiquette go, uh, plays into that. Um, oh, let me um, let me put the direct link here for you guys in case you're not coming from the Padlet. Okay. And everyone in this, anyone that's accessing this Padlet has full edit rights just because of the way I designed it. So just be careful as you come in um, not to uh, change anything yet until we all get broken out into our, our groups, okay? So you can see that some of these things are um, re uh, related to the topic we're talking about today, and there's more. And that's why I wanted to kind of um, expand this a little bit so you get a broader picture of what we're talking about when we talk about some of these elements of digital citizenship and how they work with other elements that we might have not have talked about yet. For instance, digital safety and security, we'll talk about that in more in depth next month, but it's still related to other pieces that we are talking about or have talked about in the past, such as digital literacy, um, digital access, perhaps. Um, and so just so that you have a, a, a kind of the mindset that these things are holistic, right? That they work all, they're interchangeable or they, they have interplay, right? And they, they work together, okay? So this is how it's going to work. Going to set up these breakout rooms and you're going to be assigned to a particular topic, one of these nine elements, okay? Once you get in there, what I'd like you to do is, and this is going to be, um, you, you might have to have someone um, take the lead in your group, that you're going to edit or comment on your column, only on your column, okay? So for instance, in definition, you would open up definition, find the definition, or you can create your own definition, but um, based on the definitions you find, and put the text here, okay? Replace the image here. I'd like you to replace that image. You're gonna remove the image and replace it with something that represents your topic, okay? And you can either do a search within Padlet. If you have something that you found before that might work, you can upload it. There's many different ways. There's a Padlet so flexible in that way that you can find um, resources to use, okay? Um, and then go ahead and replace that image um, and then, you know, leave definition there. Okay, video, similar. I'd like your group to find a video that's related to the topic and it could be um, uh, short, long, whatever, something that's gonna help relay the message of your, of your topic to an audience. Again, remove the image and put a link or you can search YouTube directly within Padlet to find a video as well, excuse me. Resources, I'm, I put at least three, I'm gonna say add up to three online resources due to time that can help others understand this topic. You can just put those in the comment here, okay? This is something to discuss with your group. What are some ways that you can integrate this digital citizenship topic into your subject area? Also, add a top, uh, add a comment there. So discuss and just post at least one um, idea that you can integrate this, this topic into your subject area. Bonus, if you finish quickly, um, use the I can't draw feature of Padlet to create an image that represents your topic. Be as creative as possible and have fun. If you haven't used the I can't draw um, feature, I'll show you how to use it here. You just add and go to the three dots there and it's called I can't draw. And you can just type in here a description here, just like this. They put in an expressive oil painting of a basketball player dunking as, as depicted as an explosion of a nebula. And it created this image for them, okay? Really fun. Uh, I used it just today um, and actually was able to create 
these two images. Um, this image here was using the prompt, a colorful digital art expression of the concept of digital citizenship as imagined by Picasso. It gave me six options and I chose this one out of the six. I think it looks great. And then this, this image here was an expressive vaporwave style image of digital tools being integrated into learning in a Caribbean island setting. And this, uh, this came up. So have fun with that, but go ahead and jump into the um, scavenger hunt and let's do the breakouts now. Sorry, bear with me here. I need to uh So I think we're going to have probably about three people per room, and I'm going to assign you now. <clears throat> so something should pop up on your screen there. Um, as you're being assigned. And so just go ahead and accept and enter the room. Okay, almost there. Should have. Okay, great. Okay, if you're still with me in the main room, please accept your invitation to the breakout room. Yeah, we've got a few people left in the main room. If you can join your breakout room, that would be great. Or if you're having trouble, let me know. Open up your mic. I've got Turbury, Patricia, Sherilyn, and Edith. Okay, and I have Karen. I'm going to assign you to a breakout room, okay? I'm not sure if you're having trouble joining one. And you can do you can go ahead and join that. Okay.
Okay, I will be back. I'm going to join. All right, um, folks in this room, if you're still, if you guys can hear me, um, you've been assigned to a breakout room, so hopefully you can join. Let me know if you, you're having trouble. Okay. Um, got Sherilyn, Turbury, Ver, Verna Lee, I believe, Patricia, Michelle. If you're having trouble, go ahead and open up your microphone and let me know. Yeah, um, yes, I have to um, switch devices, sorry. so um, I'm heading out to come back in. Okay, Michelle, do you have a room you were assigned to? Yes, I was with Marva, and um, I forgot the next lady's name. Okay, do you can you still join it, or do you need me to re... No, I'm actually going to get the next device now. Oh, okay, all right, thank and, you. And to the room. Thank you so much. Okay, Patricia, hi. Yes, I was saying that I suspect that it is a technical issue on my end with my internet because for some nights now it has been giving trouble. It keeps loading and nothing happens. So oh. I am continuing to try to enter. Okay, well, I'm going to assign you back. Uh, do you remember which group I had you in? No, I don't. Okay, I'm going to send you to one that has only two people in, okay? So uh, right. digital commerce. Okay, I'm going to send you there. there might be a case it might be a case where i cannot enter because i have to go to the provider to see what's wrong with my internet at night it does that okay well give yes. it a try give it a try if not don't worry we can just hang out until we're done we'll be done okay. pretty soon all right thanks i'm gonna give you access to it but if it doesn't work don't worry about it okay thank you okay All right. Hi, Michelle. Do you need me to move you back? Yes, please. How did you know it was me? I saw you come back. Which were, uh, <laughs> you were <laughs> with, you said you were with Marva and Liz. Yes, please. Okay. That is digital rights. Okay. I'm sending you there now. Thank you. Okay. There you go. You should have the, have the access now. Okay. Jerry, I'm not getting through, so. Okay. I'll just hang around like you said. That's okay. And so you can just, if you have, uh, can you look at the Padlet? Are you able to access the Padlet? I will see. Um, because then you can see kind of what everyone's doing um, okay. and just follow along. Um, let me get the, uh, I'll, I'll post the link for you in the chat, okay? All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm.
Okay, so it's there in the chat now. If you want to follow along on the top Padlet. Okay, so I still have Sherilyn, Turbury, and Patricia. Are you are you there? Can you hear me? I'm seeing the Padlet now. Thanks. Okay, great. All right.
Okay, all right. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Integrated into the process of the topic into your subject area. We don't feel welcome huh? because we were battling with this thing too much and we oh. didn't get to do what we wanted to do. Oh, okay, let's continue. Well, that's some ways that you can integrate this digital into uh -huh. I think they're back to the, 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 the room. Okay, folks, we're back. We're all back in the main room now. <laughs> we're back in the room and we feel defeated because we did not get to add our image. We had our definition, oh. our image, and our video. We didn't get to upload it. Well, that's okay. And I know that, you know, we, we're always running short on time, I think, in these sessions. There's so much material to cover. But I think this is really kind of a great way just to introduce some of these things, some of the things that we've worked on today. Um, sorry, at least I'm going to mute. Um, some of the things that we've worked on today might be um, new to you. Um, the structure, uh, some of the tools. Really what I wanted to do was introduce kind of a concept for you um, in the time allowed. So uh, I may have asked for a lot of things to be complete. Maybe we can scale that back in the future. But um, I hope that you found that somewhat interesting and, and kind of got a, a little bit of an idea of what your topic was. Um, I don't know. I, I wanted to have a little bit of time for share outs, but I don't think we're going to have that. Um, <clears throat> but if you have the chance, you want to still add, you always have access to that Padlet. Please add more content to it. And if you want to learn more about the other topics, um, uh, hopefully you'll find some resources there. If not, you always have the resources that I provided before um, here. And I hope that you started with those um, at least to get kind of acquainted with the, the topic of digital citizenship as a whole. Okay. In this presentation or in this activity, what I use, the digital tools that I use to bring this all together Padlet, of course, I use a web browser to find um, a lot of things. I used Google search uh, within my web browser to, to, to do that. I used a Google Doc for building out the activity outline, and I used ChatGPT to help me brainstorm some ideas for an activity to do. Um, I ran it, talked to it a couple of times to see um, what ideas that were out there, and I came to... Um, start working on this scavenger hunt based on some ideas that ChatGBT and I came up with. In conclusion, I hope that you have a new idea on how to integrate some of these digital skills into your instruction. Um, whether it's you're just starting out and, and building in um, using some a tool like maybe Padlet or even just having students search, we don't even need to get into ChatGBT yet. Um, but that's, you know, we really uh, are hitting the wall on time here. I welcome any feedback from you. Uh, you can always uh, email me or you can put something in the chat if you'd like right now. Um, that's always, always welcome. And I hope that you had, um, a, you know, a, a good time and, and I hope that you found it a useful use of your time here. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Let's see here. The new framework is up for you. Um, and so I think someone was going to speak on that. I'm not sure if they're they're here or maybe Jeff, if you're if no, it's Gilda. Hi. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi, Terry. It's Gilda. Hi, Gilda. Welcome. Um, please Thank take you. it away. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So Teachers, we know that, or colleagues, we know that in the education system, they are the fundamentals that we require learners to develop, whether it be literacy or numeracy. And as times change, as requirements change, we have to adapt our practices. And this is where the digital skills competency framework comes in. So as part of this project, the project team, along with um, consultation or with um, review of other competencies frameworks which already exist. We formulated this competency framework for use by the Ministry of Education, 
right? It's basically a document and it features six components with the first one being digital, sorry, devices, software, and digital inclusion. And basically, um, the, it is very important that users of technologies, whether it be the hardware or the software, have this fundamental um, knowledge of how to use devices and how to care for them. So we see this as being ground zero. And following from ground zero, we have number one, which is information, media, and data literacy. And Jerry has covered some of the competencies in his presentation. So you could have a look at some of the recordings and I will make them available in the group. So those who have not yet had a chance to do so can do, do that. And as part of information, media, and um, data literacy, you basically focus in on browsing, browsing for data. How do you work with the different types of media, be it video, be it images, be it text, and becoming aware as to the various um, techniques that can help you find data that is suited for your task or your research requirements. And it also speaks to evaluating the data. When you find the data, it's sim similar to what we were speaking about earlier, your digital footprint. How does one validate that the information found about an individual is correct? Will they check multiple sources or um, is that information only retrievable from one site? Can it be cross-referenced? So as part of that competency, data obtained on the internet should be able to be evaluated for accuracy and reliability. And when we have all this data, what do we do with it? How do we manage it in on our laptops, on our devices? So having all of these, being able to do all of these forms part of working with data. And today we worked or we looked at communication and collaboration, but today we focus basically on communication, but competency number two speaks to communication and collaboration. How do you interact with digital technologies? How do you share through digital technologies? And today we use Padlet. The breakout groups presented the information that was found using the digital technologies. Netiquette, as well as digital identities, all of these forms part of communication and collaboration. What's big now is digital content creation. And in our region, and specific to St. Lucia, in our education circles, we do not have what we can really say is content created by us, by our students. So we believe that the one of the competencies is being able to um, create digital content, knowing what are uh, the fundamentals? What do you should you consider? What are the copyright copyright licenses that can be used? And as well as some amounts of programming. All right. So these are some of the topics covered under the digital content creation. Following this, we have the fourth competency of safety. With all of this technology being immersed in these um, virtual spaces. How do we protect our devices? How do we protect our content? How, we do pro how do we protect our health and well-being? So all of that information as a user of technology with the necessary digital skills, you will be able, if you have those, have de developed those competencies, then we'll more or less say that you are literate, not necessarily literate, but you have, um, an understanding and an awareness of what it takes to have digital skills and to use them appropriately. This takes us to the fifth competency, which is problem solving and lifelong learning. And all of us here can attest to lifelong learning because even from our activity, activity today, I can guarantee that most of us may have learned something. And just as tech, the, um, our educational system requirements is ever changing, more so for technology, because now we have chat GPT and AI, right? And these are things that we cannot run away from. And it speaks to how we can use those technologies and what we learn to solve problems that may exist in our various spheres. So, 
basically the adoption of this digital skills competency framework is more or less fundamental to creating a citizenship or a citizenry that is digitally literate or has some basic functional digital skills that can help them exist and contribute meaningfully to their environment um, or to the ecosystem that they exist in. All right. Um, the digital skills framework is shown on your screen. And as I was quickly, because I know we have had a long day going through the competencies, Jerry was dropping in the chat the various webinars that have covered some of the competencies as well as the, re the remainder of the webinars um, in May and June and the topics that they will cover. So just like this webinar and other spots, I don't think you want to miss the other webinars as they will provide an even greater um, in-depth view of the competencies and what they entail. Okay, so we'll entertain three questions. Do we have time, Je um, Jeff? Any questions? Yeah, we're oh. over, but we can take time if people have questions on this or okay. the webinar. Another option is there's a Padlet available. I will share it in the group, and this will give the teachers the opportunity to post feedback based on the competencies. All right. In the interest of time, that might be the better option. Okay, great. Thank you, Gilda. Um, You're fantastic. Welcome. The um, the framework there is in the Padlet is downloadable. You can click on that and download that that there as you see. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think that's that is it. Uh, I hope that you are able to add any remaining uh, items to the Padlet uh, activity that we had today. I appreciate your your participation um, at these webinars. I really look forward to them every month, and I hope to see you in May. Thank you so much, and have a fantastic rest of your evening. You too, Jerry. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, yeah, Marva, if you have a question, go ahead. Um... Oh, I thought I thought Gilda was placing a Padlet to post questions. Ah, oh, it's posted in the chat, actually. I'm looking for it. But I will also send it in the the <laughs> WhatsApp group. So you could also access it from there. Yeah, I was just I I like the 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 layout. I'm I'm a big promoter of health and well being for of students, especially whether it relates to protecting themselves from possible dangers in digital digital environments. Example: cyber bullying, and this is a big issue at our schools. So I was hoping that that there would be some aspect of collaboration with 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 the the law enforcers to um and educate and have more more awareness of what the the legalities of misuse of computers are Thanks for that contribution, Marvel. And I do agree. And it is something that the principals association and maybe even the teachers union, as well as um, organized groups of teachers can take on as we seek to become more empowered so that we deal with the challenges that the use of the technologies might present because we cannot run away from the fact that we will have to continue using them because they do add to the education you know, process, learning as well as teaching. So that's a very good point. Thank you for that again. Thank you for your response. You're welcome. I think that's it, Jerry. Okay, thank you. I'm going to end the, the webinar now if there's uh, no more questions. And if there are, please put them onto the Padlet, which Gilda will send out. 
Um, again, I appreciate everyone joining us. Have a great evening.